Hi everyone, my name is Anne. Welcome to my home studio in Parker, Colorado. You're watching Art on the Creek and I am so happy you're here with me today. I have a little surprise for us. As artists, it seems like we always have a wish list of what supplies we want, right? Well, my wish list, my number one, has always been Faber-Castell Polychromos colored pencils. So when it came to the point where I was in a position to buy them, I kind of chickened out. I thought, oh no, what if I get them and I regret it? What if I wished I had had the luminance? What if I wished I purchased the Pablos? What if the Derwent Lightfast is the one I really want? So since this is so tactile and subjective a decision, I know that I'm not the only one suffering from this dilemma. So what I thought I would do this week with the two videos on uh, Thursday and Friday this week, we're going to do a comparison. I've done a little bit of shopping. I decided I would go ahead and get a set of 12 from several different brands, really make a comparison, give that feedback to you guys, and hopefully I can help all of us make a decision as to which colored pencils that we want in our art supply arsenal. So let's start off by comparing the Caran Dash Luminance with the Caran Dash Pablo colored pencils. Are you ready? Let's see what they can do. For this experiment, I'm going to purchase everything from Blick because they have been matching uh, Amazon prices. They've been matching really low pricing. And uh, unless I find a drastic price difference everywhere, I'm going to try and eliminate as many variables as possible with this test. And uh, I know that Blick packages things really well. And uh, to Amazon, it's just another box. I have no idea if that makes a difference, but to me, it does. So. I enjoy helping an art business sell art supplies. So here's what I purchased. I purchased the Pablo set on the right and then the Luminance set on the left, and they're each a set of 12. So I don't know if they contain exactly the same colors, but I figure it's a pretty good basic set. Here's what I'm going to be drawing today. I have this pad of Arches paper that is 100% cotton and it is hot press. I like using hot press paper on my colored pencil drawings. And I thought this little cat was pretty cute if we, there we can turn on the light box. You can see I can do his eyes and his nose and just kind of fill in a little bit of detail. Today the test I think will only get through uh, one of the eyes, but that's okay. We'll continue to, uh, to work on this. So let me trace this and uh, I'll get right back with you. All right, I've got that all traced. Now let's untape it. I just use washi tape for this, and I really like this little light box. I'll put a link to it in the description, as well as a link to this line drawing from Pixabay if you are interested in doing this test yourself. I don't have an actual reference photo of a cat. I just have my own memory <laughs> of our uh, tabby cat, Chloe. And uh, she, she had really pretty green eyes, so that's kind of what I'm thinking of when I'm doing this test here. Uh, here's the packaging. It comes in a beautiful tin, which it always does. Karen Dash does not skimp on packaging. And they always come with this uh, paper cover that has inside of it, there is a hex chart where you can make your own color chart. And I do want to do that. So this pencil is water resistant. It's got dry lead and there's no dust. Excellent light fastness. And it does have a full range of 120 bright and opaque colors. There is no blooming, which is where you have the wax bloom. You get that sheen on there. And it contains a high concentration of extra fine pigments. And they're also sold individually, which is very important to me. So I was a little puzzled opening the tin <laughs> because in my mind, this opens backwards. I expected it to open like a book, but uh, it doesn't. So I'm going to um, put this little sticker. This, this sheet here is a sticker for all their products and then you can uh, label each tin because they're all the same red iconic tin. Um, so I will label it horizontally there so that I can tell how to open it. <laughs> but that kind of threw me. Um, and here I'm looking for the Pablo sticker. It's on there. I just uh, took me a minute to find it. Uh, that little insert explains a few things as well. Right now, I'm quite honestly trying to struggle to read that white on white on there, white on clear, rather, on this sticker put on a white background. So I'm going to deal with that later. Uh, the insert there in vellum has uh, some information about the company, how they take pride in their work. And that is very evident when you first pick up the pencil. They are hexagonal in shape, and they say the permanent color, Pablo Caran Dash, Swiss made. And then when you roll it over to the other side, you have a barcode, the name in French, Jean Citron, which is lemon yellow. 
a color number code, and then three stars for light fastness. The color on the casing does match the color of the lead, and the end is capped. The lead core measures 3.8 millimeters in diameter, and they feel very good in the hand. They're nice to hold. And it is a wax pencil, which is very interesting because it does not feel like Prismacolor. It's not quite as soft as Prismacolor. So now I'm going to struggle a minute here to, um, to put the sticker on, so bear with me. <laughs> but I'm going to uh, read you just a little bit more here from the company. Let's see here. That, uh, that lead, uh, again, it's a hexagonal pencil. And that prevents the pencil from rolling off your table, which if you watched my channel before, you'll know that my table is not level. One of these days I'm going to fix that, but it's really nice to know that the pencil is not going to roll off the table because when your pencils do that and hit the floor, the lead can break on the inside. So I like that very much. Um, they are premium FSC certified cedar wood, and they are also water-based ecological varnished on the outside. So that's very, very nice. And they're very, they're an environmentally conscious company and I really like that. So now we're gonna go through and I'll make these color swatches here and I will tell you about the light fastness as I'm coloring. Lemon yellow has a light fastness of three stars. Cobalt blue is also three stars. The gray is three stars. Grass green, black, and white are all three stars, and that is an excellent light fast rating. And on their color chart here, they state that that is under 150 hours of UV light. The two star pencils are scarlet, violet, umber, purple, and orange. And in this particular set, there are no one star light fast rating pencils. The two stars means very good. Let me read to you from the vellum insert, and I'm sorry the camera's a little shaky on this high speed. What it states is that, Karen Dash, for over 100 years we have been comp accompanying you in the expression of your creativity. Your precious Karen Dash box and their bright colors have been carefully produced by our craftsmen in our unique manufacturer in Geneva. They are a Swiss company. Uh, what else can I say about them? The, the color pencil is matte. There is no shine to them. I found when I was coloring this, and this is just their wrapper paper, so, you know, it's just, an, um, I'm just going to call it your average paper. It's uh, it's about a little heavier than cardstock weight, and it does have a slight tooth to it on the inside. I'm coloring very lightly. I was able to layer and layer and layer and layer, and that made me very happy. I felt like I could have even added more layers on this than I had. Um, the one thing that I did notice was that the black and the white were not as intense pigment that I expected them to be. I felt that my Prismacolor pencils would put down more pigment, especially on the white, and you'll see that when we get down to it. What I did in that little white uh, hexagon was I put a little stripe of Sharpie to see how well the white would cover over black. And to me, it looked pretty sheer. It didn't look like the coverage was all that spectacular. I think when I'm done with both of these videos, at the end of tomorrow's, I will uh, do a little test of the white colored pencils alone on some black paper. And that way we can kind of keep a running total of who has the best white colored pencil, because that's pretty special. And again, I only tested it here on this and on the, the drawing that I'm going to start here in just a little bit of our kitty cat. The black here, you can see it layers very well. I felt that these pencils were very soft, yet much harder than the, than the Prismacolors. If there's a way that I can explain this, Prismacolors feel like they're not quite as soft as if you were coloring with a lipstick, but they are very buttery smooth. Um, there is some resistance when you color with a Prismacolor because there are some crumbs that generate. It's not enough to inhibit the process. However, I have created smears and smudges on my work with Prismacolors because when you brush those crumbs away, if you don't brush it soon enough or don't catch it soon enough, apply too much pressure with the brush, it can leave marks on your paper. This generated no crumbs whatsoever. So now I'm going in with some uh, mineral spirits. This is uh, Utrecht No Ode, or Nude, I think is what they say, um, odorless mineral spirits. The N-O-O-D comes from no odor. And I'm blending with mineral spirits. I prefer to blend with mineral spirits because if I use a colorless blender, and I do have two Karen Dash colorless blenders, but I'm not bringing them out for this project. My hands get very, very tired, and I do have... Um, pretty significant arthritis in my hands and I really prefer to blend with this mineral spirits because it's just easier on my joints. Uh, 
Uh, so on, on these hexagons, everything on the left side has been blended with the odorless mineral spirits. And I have, what, four or five layers down here, very light pressure. It left a little bit of a difference, not much. On the violet, you can really see it there. Um, I think you can see it on the umber pretty well. But overall, I think that um, had I put down a significant, uh, significantly higher number of layers, the mineral spirits would have uh, taken on as a stronger effect. So now what I'd like to do is one more test. Let me get out another sheet of paper of this Arches Hot Press here. Now I'm going to apologize right away. Some of this is out of frame. I was just too excited <laughs> and I forgot to check. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm coloring with kind of firm pressure now at this point. I was using light pressure on the color chart, but now I'm using firm pressure and you'll see I'm holding the pencil just a little bit differently. I'm holding it further back and laying it almost uh, almost parallel to the paper. And I'm just kind of making a, a blend of a rainbow here. And this is a lot of pressure. It's kind of putting some strain on my hands. There we go. And now I'm going to merge that orange and that yellow together so you can see what this looks like. So I'm gonna go through the whole rainbow here and try and overlap and blend these colors the one thing that I'm noticing is that the amount of crumbs that are being generated is so minimal. Already, I love these more than my Prismacolors. They are firmer, but they're not scratchy. They don't feel uncomfortable to color with. And look at how much space I'm getting filled in in the tooth of that paper. And again, I am pressing rather hard, so that may not be uh, too fair of a comparison. But when we do the demo with the cat, you'll see that the, the pencils really do fill in the tooth quite well on this paper. I'm not getting any kind of uh, real noticeable gaps in the coverage. I'm getting a lot of good thorough coverage, much like an oil pencil would do. So I'm just overlapping all of these colors and trying to create somewhat of a gradient here just to see how they blend. And we'll go over this again with the mineral spirits. So let me run through all these pencils and I'll meet you back at the white because I don't think I gave that one a fair shot on this paper. But again, white on white is something you would never do. So. I do want to show it to you and see, show you how it happened, but um, that's on me. I don't think that uh, the part of the white test turned out to be too fair. So I do something at the end with the white pencil to make up for it because I need to be fair to all these pencils. <laughs> so again, I'm using pretty firm pressure and you can see with this white, and I should have known that this would happen. This was pretty silly of me. Um, basically, I'm burnishing over that gray. So of course, it's bringing it out into the uh, the the white paper and leaving just kind of a gray smudgy mess. Um, what you can learn from this though is that it does actually blend the pencil when you go over it. So you can see I've got some good blends in between the colors here and look at there's hardly any crumbs, just a very, very few. I was very impressed with that. So let me get my brush real quick here and we'll just brush those crumbs away. And then we can go ahead and begin with some more blending. I wanted to use the mineral spirits on this again because I wanted to check what it was like to use mineral spirits when you have a lot of heavy layers. For the style of colored pencil artwork that I do when I draw a piece entirely in colored pencil, it's typically in the background that, that I will find myself in this situation where I have a lot of very heavy layers that I want to go over with um, mineral spirits. So I'm using a Royal Langnickel Taclon brush or nylon and uh, just kind of painting the mineral spirits on here. And we're just gonna go down the entire left side of this rainbow and see how it blends. And I'm not at all surprised, as you can see, um, it really does blend quite well. I love watching this on uh, double time because you can really see that blending take place. And it's it's got much more of an impact uh, when you have more layers. I think on that, uh, the swatch, I had barely enough layers to do blending with mineral spirits. So here we're just kind of round the corner here. I'm blending the green and the brown together, and then we'll get into the black, which takes on a lovely velvety hue and wait till you see this gray when it blends. It just almost turns into like a gouache. It's just beautiful. It doesn't feel like gouache, it doesn't move like gouache, but it really blends quite well. And then when I got to the white, same situation. I don't think I gave this a fair test because I did, in effect, use that white to just pull some gray out onto the white. And as I said earlier, we're, I'm just gonna test these whites individually tomorrow at the end of that video. We'll use black paper but I just wanted to take a look and see what that looks like with the, the blending of the odorless mineral spirits and 10 out of 10. I'm very happy with the results.
I thought what I would try next is to burnish these colors together after all. And I can do a little small piece here and be okay. I didn't want to use the Karen Dash Colorless Blender though because it didn't come with the set. So I'm only testing the tools that were given to me in the set, in the set with the exception of the, of the odorless mineral spirits. So I'm burnishing with a white colored pencil. I kind of wanted to see um, how pastel the color gradients ended up and uh, what kind of a bloom we got with them. And I will say I like the way the colors ended up when they were blended with a, a white colored pencil when they were burnished that way. And uh, the bloom was very, very small. It was somewhat noticeable when it was tipped in the light, but it wasn't, uh, it wasn't substantial. So I really appreciated uh, the performance of this step as well. Now that this is back down on regular speed, I'll pan through it quickly here so that you can see the quick rainbow that I made putting down several vibrant layers and the burnishing and the blending effects. I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. I think it works just fine. Moving on with the kitty cat drawing here. Um, this line drawing reminded me so much of a little cat that we used to have. Her name was Chloe and uh, we had two cats at the time actually. We had Sylvester. He was the first cat that I got out of college and then we got Chloe too so that he could have a friend. And boy, they had a, a sibling rivalry, that's for sure. They weren't related at all, but they sure acted like crazy brother and sister. Uh, Chloe was much smaller than Sylvester. He was a Maine Coon and Chloe was a small little tabby cat. And we found out that the reason that Chloe was so small and that she didn't meow, we didn't find this out until after Sylvester passed away, he wouldn't let her eat. He was quite the bully. Cats are amazing. I had no idea that, that cats really had these kind of hierarchical relationships, but of course they do. It makes perfect sense now. <laughs> but Chloe gained three pounds. This is a, a four pound cat. She gained three pounds after Sylvester died because she was finally able to eat enough food and she meowed. It, she used to always just make this noise that kind of sounded like macaque, macaque. You know, she wouldn't put any sound into it. But then after Sylvester passed away, about a month later, we heard her actually meow. And that was kind of exciting. Um, and then she put on so much weight. That, and she was totally healthy the whole time. The vet didn't even have an idea that Sylvester was depriving her of food. So I kind of wanted to pay homage to our little Chloe. Um, I'm starting off with a layer of yellow and it's going down beautifully. I'm using a pretty light pressure right now. And then I'm going in there with the green, layering on just beautifully. I'm adding some of the ultramarine in here. She had some blue to her eyes. They were really just such a beautiful hazel. And so I'm kind of trying to just replicate this. Again, I'm going purely from memory. So whatever, uh, if you decide to draw this little line drawing that I've linked to the bottom, if you wanna print it out and draw one for your own, you know, of course, use whatever colors you want to use. Uh, and you can also use a reference of an actual cat photo. I'm going purely from memory, so my memory could be a little foggy and this may not turn out too realistic, but I'm thinking of Chloe and that's a good memory. So <laughs> I'm just kind of trying to get more color on the outside and uh, continue with these uh, the radial designs. I am having absolutely no issue layering whatsoever. This is the cobalt blue that I'm going in with for the reflection. And now I'm going in with some of the umber to get some of the darker brown shades in, some of these uh, little striations in the pupil. And let's see, I think I'm gonna skip ahead. I ended up adding orange, grass green, lemon yellow, cobalt blue, ultramarine, and umber. And of course, uh, black in the, in the pupil itself. And then I also added some white at the end. I burnished just a tiny bit with the white and I added some in. Let's go ahead and fill the pupil in here and then I will put this on double speed so that we can skip ahead. I have a highlight up in the upper right hand corner there. That's what the cobalt blue is. And now I left a little highlight here also with the black. So there could be some reflection in her eyes. And let's see, okay, now I'm gonna move this to double speed. We'll put the orange in and we'll keep going. While you're watching these layers continue to go down, um, let me just talk a little bit more about these pencils here. They hold their point really, really well. All of the tests I did in the beginning with that hard coloring and the, uh, the color chart that came with the set, I didn't have to sharpen these again and I'm continuing to color here on this kitty cat eye and I didn't have to sharpen until um, I did in a little bit. But it wasn't because the pencil was dull, it was because I wanted a, a, a more of a point on it. And I have that great pencil sharpener that gets a real long point, so I wanted to change the shape of the pencil. 
And when I did sharpen it, uh, it was very strong and durable. The only time that one of those leads broke was when I was simply pressing too hard with the white. So I feel like this, the lead that's in here is very durable and it'll hold your point for a long time. The hexagonal shape fits in most standard pencil sharpeners, so you won't have to get a special pencil sharpener for it. It's, it's just fine. When I was doing the initial color swatching, I felt like, oh, these aren't very opaque. But then I got to layering them. And I, if I could only explain to you how wonderful that is to be able to put down so many layers. When you're working with colored pencil as an art medium, you want all of this layer and depth and dimension of color. It's, uh, it's a little bit more, how can I say it? It's not like watercolor, but there is that bit of luminosity that you can achieve with colored pencil that comes through as it does with, with watercolor. And the way that you do that, the way that that is achieved is by putting a lot of layers down. Not only was I able to continually layer, in fact, when I was done with this eye here, I could have kept going. I could have put more layers on and I was astounded by that. I felt as if I had colored this with Prismacolor, I would have lost the tooth of the paper a little bit earlier on. That may not be true. That could just be the, the pressure that I'm applying with my hand. That may not be true for you. But for me, I certainly felt that that was something that I was very, very impressed with. And as you can see here, I'm going in and just kind of finishing up the highlight on this. Um, I was very impressed with the opacity, like I said, because ultimately I feel like this eye has a lot of depth in it. Um, I don't know if it's showing up on camera here. You might see where I break this white tip off the pencil here because I was kind of pushing a little bit a little bit too hard uh, when I was burnishing this in, but I really feel like all of the layers that I was able to put on this eye, I felt like it, it really gave you the sense that you could really look into that cat's eye. We'll see what this looks like when it's done. I mean, I don't mean to say that this is the best cat eye in the world, but you know, it was, <laughs> I was having fun. I was really enjoying drawing this. And for me, that's the whole point. Is it pleasurable to use? And again, 10 out of 10 for the Pablos. I, if these were the only set available to me, I would be extremely happy that I chose these. Um, but like I said, I'm gonna continue to test and do some more. Let's talk about price. No one is sponsoring me. I'm not sponsored by Blick or Karen Dash at all, but uh, Blick is just a place I like to shop. Um, because I trust them. They're a good company. So you find your favorite company, you do your shopping, you do what you need to do. But they run at Blick $2.06 per pencil, or you can get the entire set of 120 for 239 and some change. So the set I got is a set of 12 and it lists for $33.95, but I got it for $21.51. And again, this is, uh, I'm in the United States, so of course these are all US dollar prices. And again, the colors that come in this set are yellow, orange, scarlet, purple, violet, ultramarine, cobalt blue, grass green, umber, black, gray, and white. So you really do have a good, good range and you can mix and blend and come up with really beautiful, deep color ranges. And even as I'm coloring here, you can still see that initial layer of yellow coming through. And a part of that is uh, due to the way that I'm coloring it, but I really feel like these have the potential to be a go-to colored pencil for a professional artist. Um, I feel like the luminance might have a higher light fast rating in general, but that is a guess right now. Um, we'll have to see if that's true on tomorrow's video. In looking at the Karen Dash website, I see that all of their products do have a warranty. Specifically, I haven't had reason to look that up, but if you ever do run into something that's a Karen Dash product that you own and uh, you want to take advantage of that warranty, go ahead and send them an email on their uh, on their website and I'm sure they'll be able to help you or you can contact uh, the retailer where you purchased it from. Most of them will stand behind this product. As with all art supplies, paper makes a difference, the pencils make a difference, and your pressure makes a difference. Um, I feel like this Arches Hot Press is going to be really a great paper to test with. It is my go-to paper for colored pencil projects. So I'm going to keep that consistent throughout these tests. 
And um, yeah, I think we're going to have some fun. So here is our cat eye, the very first one done in the Karen Dash Pablo. And I will continue to work on the left side of this cat in the Pablo. And then uh, we'll catch up tomorrow with the right side where we open the luminance and we'll compare the two. All right. We'll see you tomorrow. You guys have a great night. Bye.